Yeah, let's talk about automation, Steve. I mean, um, your your company is uh, beginning to automate some of this data capture. I, I think it's fair to say we kind of stand at the headwaters right now of uh, uh, a lot of this technology hitting the market. You know, I, I know we'll see much more happening in the future, but can you help us understand, um, you know, how firms are thinking about automating uh, data data capture and some of these reporting activities? Well, well sure. Um, you know, I think um, the, the data that we've certainly gone through and, and the results of the survey show there's a real opportunity for organizations to uh, alleviate that manual burden um, and to get better insight into the selling process while frankly, making their sales reps happier. <laughs> I mean, I think there's a, there ought to be a satisfaction index in there of people who are just happy that they don't have to be doing these things. Um, but when we look at the, the, the problem per se, there's, there's really two sides to it. One is the quantitative, you know, how many calls did I make? How many texts did I make? That sort of thing. And, and we're looking at some things where we can link into your video conferencing system, catch into your, your, uh, your chat systems, you know, if you want to capture you know, the sort of interactions via Slack or stuff you're doing with customers, that sort of thing. But but really capture those and then put, hey, there was a phone call. Hey, there was a text message. Hey, there was a whatever. So that as a manager, if you're looking holistically at how your people are doing, you see, you know, I can see all of the emails that were sent. I can also see all of the calls that were made and whatever. And, and, and you get that real good comparison of what's going on. But really understanding the quantitative side of it. That way the salesperson doesn't have to go find the, I had a phone call screen and this is what happened screen. And this is who I talked to all that sort of captured bundled up packaged in. We just shove it right into the CRM form right through the mobile app. The, the second part of that really is the content associated with that engagement, right? So, <clears throat> you know, AI is everywhere. And uh, we in fact thought maybe we should be uh, autopilot.ai. You know, it's uh, it seems to be a hot topic. Um, but the reality is, it's very easy to capture, you know, the the content of a, an engagement, of a call, of a text message, uh, um, of a, t uh, um, even a transcription of a call. These days, can happen in real time. We, were, Bob, you and I were were doing a little bit of that the other day. Um, taking that information now becomes really a, a an opportunity, I think, for sales management to kind of dig in at that next level as well and, and start to really understand the the sentiment, the what what's happening at that customer. Rather than through the filter or through the lens of the salesperson, you're able to really get a feel for it right off the bat. And I'm sure those of us who really look at the overall sales systems and that sort of thing, the CRM is the tip of the spear, right? It is the entry point for so much of what goes on, um, whether it be through finance or manufacturing or back-end service support. You know, it really is that entry level, that gateway product for the entire organization. And so... You know, it's it, it, the the higher the quality of the data we can put in there, and the more analysis we can do of the data that we can put in there, the better off the entire organization is and will be over time as we as we start to see that information propagate through. Good, thank you, Steve. I'm um, as you're um, speaking, I'm um, monitoring some of the questions that okay. are coming in, and I'll also take a moment. I'll remind our audience that you can uh, uh, send your questions to us by email. Um, that's how we're doing it uh, these days while we uh, investigate some other good ways to do that. Um, the email address to use is q at smasoch.org. Let me spell that for you. It's S-M-A-S-S-O-C dot org. Q at S-M-A-S-S-O-C dot org. We'll leave that banner rolling on the bottom of the screen and um, we'll um, we'll get to some of these questions. Um. So uh, let's start with um, with this one, um, which is, uh, can you track things like texts uh, or social media activities without a salesperson's permission to do so? Have you guys investigated this issue? Uh, certainly on the tech side, there's a whole slew of regulation associated with uh, who, what, where, when, and why. Um, and... Uh, uh, the the assumption is that the 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 communication is is consensual for what's going on. Now it gets a little funny when you start to break down the difference between, say, marketing texts, which need an explicit 
I consent to receive messages from this person or this organization, that sort of thing. Whereas if I just take my phone and I start texting somebody, you know, nobody's going to complain to AT and T or Verizon, that sort of thing. So, so those sorts of things. However, we're taking the the, the cautious approach. So we assume that even if I have a an autopilot text messaging number that I'm going to use as a as a business number for business communication, we're still going to get that consent. We're still going to have a layer in that says you write stop and and you're taken off the mm -hmm. list. That sort of thing. So. Um, yeah, so let me let me permission is important. Yeah, so I think you're responding to the concept, which is also very, uh, very important about people you're texting. Mm -hmm. Should you get their permission? Sounds like good practice as you should, and you should have those other things in place, like how to stop receiving them. But if they're marketing related, um, but the question might be focused more on the salesperson's own privacy. So if it's oh, a personal, yeah. personal phone, for example, I, I'm, I'm guessing it's di a different. Answer if it's a company provided piece of equipment versus a salesperson's, maybe for sure, for sure. And our solution implies that the the salesperson is actively using a company provided app. That the autopilot app itself is um, sort of the, the the fountainhead of that information. There's no snooping that's going on there. We're not yeah. we're not trying to tunnel into your your iOS system and, and listen in and, and snoop on those sorts of things. This is all above board. Right. Even more data you wouldn't know what to do with anyway. Right. So, um, uh, but yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. So, um, yeah. for, for most firms of any size, they're going to have a company provided asset. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think every, every organization uh, certainly of, of any size nowadays has a, um, sort of a, a, a personal use process and, or, a, a profile okay. and, and, privacy statement and, and how we're going to use your data. And, you know, if you send personal emails through your work system, it's part of the work environment and that sort of thing. So, um, right. Oh, all right. So uh, let's get to another question, which is, um, um, related to AI, will AI solutions uh, require, um, new skills from managers? Uh, you talked a little bit about this. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. Well, this mean, yeah, I mean, it's going to replace managers. No, I'm just kidding. Good. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, Don't be afraid. There, there are, as I, I think there will be a, a, a new way of thinking about how AI can be used. And I think it's going to require some thoughtful consideration from, from management in general. Um, uh, you know, I, I, as, as we, as a general population start to become more comfortable with the idea that, everything can be tracked and it always is tracked, that sort of thing. Um, I think the ability to use AI tools, you know, for me as a sales manager to say, hey, I want to go analyze these 25 calls and send them in there. There's some exceptionally powerful tools that are available these days. Um, I don't know that that's the best use of my time. And I do feel like there's going to be an interim role, whether that comes out of the org IT organization or whatever, where, you know, if you're in sales operations, I would definitely get my hands on that and start to look at conversational AI and the tools that go along with that and how that can add value to the overall um, managerial and reporting process that you're being asked to, to take on. Um, because I think the tools are easy enough now to do if you roll up those sleeves and, and get in there. But That makes a lot of sense. To learn. Yeah, I can see why uh, that's important for a uh, like a sales ops role, because I, my guess is many of these off the shelf solutions uh, um, and, and don't have the context um, knowledge to uh, uh, adequately adapt, you know, um, to the organization. So um, very interesting. Um, looks like we have um, one more question. This one's kind of a um, crystal ball uh, question. Uh, it is, do you have an opinion on the future <laughs> of CRM? <laughs> No. <laughs> See, well, let's just say, you know, let's uh, let's consider that um, we're not on a webinar with the Sales Management Association. We are uh, at the circus and we're inside a tent and uh, we're reading fortunes and we're asked to provide, you know, what will life look like, say, in 10 years mm. uh, for the typical salesperson uh, and for the, you know, role of the firm who wants to um, collect activity data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You think we'll have a lot more of this automated? I think we will have more uh, automation on the data capture perspective. Um, uh, 
you know, I think so much of business is moving digitally and online and, and self-serve and that sort of thing. Does that, does that have that just overall trend of how we don't want to talk to people anymore? It seems that, uh, but at the end of the day, people dealing with people, that's, that's the, the way we work. That's uh, civilization in general. So uh, I, I don't think it goes away. I think it will be transformed. Um, you know, just one example popped into my head was, uh, which is something that which I thought thought was baffling, but I talked to my kids and they're they're totally for it. Is now uh, concierge services at some hotels? You can just text them what you want, and I'm like, well, why wouldn't you just call them and talk to them? Well, you know, I'd just rather do these kinds of things. It's still a commu- It's an interaction. It's a communication between a client and a and a service provider, and and that information still should still be rolled up into my my CRM, but. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of that digital, it's a lot of that self-service that I think is, is really going to start to take a, continue to take a bigger role in, in customer interactions. Yeah. Well, good thoughts. Well, thank you um, for opining uh, on that <laughs> uh, curveball of a question. Um, so um, uh, we are up against the uh, end of the hour, so, sadly. So I do um, just on a personal note, want to thank you, Steve, um, uh, also for the support of Autopilot in uh, helping to us to do this research. Uh, uh, it's through your support in part that we're able to do research like this. And this is a really interesting study. So we just very much appreciate uh, your partnership and your interest in this topic. And we think the uh, the findings will be helpful uh, to our audience. So thank you. Yeah, well, we, we appreciate your support. We came to you with the questions and, and you helped us get answers to them. And uh, that's exactly what we're looking for. So um, I look forward to a, a long and fruitful relationship with the SMA. Well, thank you. Well, um, since we're at the end of the, our time, I will, uh, I'll uh, leave it uh, there. I'm Bob Kelly, uh, SMA chairman on behalf of uh, Autopilot Technologies, Steve Shaw. Thank you for your time and attention today. Goodbye until next time.